Welcome to the Barreto family. My name is Kayla Barreto, and this is my helper, Eliana Barreto. And today we are super excited. Um, you guys, oh, those guys, are you saying hi to them? Say hi. Can you say hi? That was not a wow wow. That was a meow meow. There are cats meow, outside. Meow meow. meow, meow. Good job. With that fun intro, <laughs> we are excited today. We are going to do a part two, I guess it's technically a part three, of a Q&A on Operation Christmas Child. We did a video a couple weeks ago, and you guys asked a ton of phenomenal questions, and we answered them, all of the questions we had at that time, and we did it on two different channels, on my channel and also on Matt Man and Robin's channel. If you have not checked out those two videos, I will put a link to those in the description below so that you guys can check them out. But today we are going to do another part, answering more questions that you guys asked on Operation Christmas Child. In the comments of both of those videos, you asked more questions, things that were not covered in those two videos. And so I wanted to take the time and answer more of your questions about Operation Christmas Child. But I'm also going to do something on this video some of you guys posted really great comments with your perspective or your thoughts and insight. And I think those insights are also very valuable. So there's a few comments of yours that aren't necessarily questions, but I'm going to read as well. And then stick around to the end of this video because one of the questions was regarding um, different countries. So I'm giving you a perspective as a missionary in Latin America. I have gotten these boxes in the jungles of Ecuador and now in the capital city of Bogota, Colombia. And so I have a decent perspective, but it's all Latin American based. Well, a couple of you guys asked questions about Africa and, and how the boxes are received there and things like that. I don't have a whole lot of insight of how the boxes are received there, but I was able to contact three different missionaries in Africa who are currently on the ground. Um, I'm not going to share their names because a lot of those areas and regions in Africa are considered closed areas. And so um, they are not necessarily allowed to be public with the fact that they're missionaries in their zones. And so I am not going to share with you where those missionaries are located, nor can I share their names, but I will tell you guys what their opinions were. So stick around at the end of the video, I'm gonna share their thoughts on Operation Christmas Child. But without any further ado, let's get into the questions that you guys asked after our last video. I'm gonna go question by question. And I'm gonna see if I can keep this video short, but I wanna cover all of these questions in this video. If you guys, after watching this video and the others, if you still have more questions that I didn't answer, make sure you put them in the comments below and I will do my very best to get to every single one of your comments and questions. So the first question was asked by Penny Cothran. And she said, I know a lot of people send reusable feminine hygiene pads for the older girls, but I get great deals on the disposable ones. Are those okay to send or would they be adding to the trash that can that cannot be disposed of? And what about band-aids? And I'm gonna lump this in with Leslie F who also asked any thoughts on sending cloth menstrual pads in 10 to 14 girl boxes. So I will say I have never seen in any of the boxes that I've received in these past three years now, um, I've never seen any of the cloth pads come in but I will say they would be useful. So I think it, especially in the jungle area where some of those hygiene products are harder to find or more expensive, I think they would be very useful. And I know one of the missionaries from Africa also made a comment on that. So I will read her comment later. Um, but yes, I would say it's definitely something you can send in terms of whether it would be better to send disposable or cloth. I think that's more of a personal opinion. Um, I think they're both useful. So the cloth ones, obviously you're gonna get a more long-term use out of, but the disposable ones might just be easier for the girls. So I don't think it's a problem to send the disposable ones. I think people are going to use them no matter what. If that's something that you're concerned about in terms of um, waste, maybe it's a good option for you to send the cloth, but I think either way is going to be a blessing and a benefit. 
Um, again, let me reiterate the fact that these are my personal opinions. So if you guys have another opinion and you think that something would be wonderful and I say that I wouldn't suggest it, don't take that as an end all be all that you shouldn't send it. These are just my personal opinions, what I've seen, what I know um, from the three years of experience receiving the boxes. But please always feel free to pray about it and think on it. And if it's something that's on your heart, I say, go for it. Um, but so short answer would be, I think either way is fine. I don't think either of those is a problem to send. And then band-aids, I would say absolutely. Um, so fun story from last week, we on April 9th, we did our operation Christmas child evangelism party. And one of the little boys fell down and he ripped a hole in his pant leg and he had a bloody knee and we didn't have any band-aids. We had not purchased a first aid kit for the church. And so we just didn't have any. And lo and behold, when he opened his box, one of the things that was tucked inside his box was a package of band-aids. His face just lit up. And that was the first thing he grabbed and asked for help to put a bandaid on because it was a need that he had. So it was just really cool to see how even in those little things God provides. So I would say hygiene products and band-aids. I think they are both a phenomenal idea. Um, next question is from Tanya Evans. She says, can many children read English? If not, is there someone who can translate for them? So here in Ecuador and Colombia, I would say most of the kids cannot read English. Um, they do take English classes, but in terms of reading proficiency, it is very low. I would say most kids throughout their schooling will probably acquire a kindergarten or first grade level of reading. Um, now there might be some that excel and, and go beyond that. I'm not saying that that's not possible, but I would say that the majority of the kids, at least in these two countries where I've been, cannot read English. And there is not a person normally that can translate for them. Now I can, because I'm from the United States. So the kids that get the boxes where I'm at, I try to do my very best to go through and translate their letters and translate anything that they want. Sometimes they'll get a game and they ask me how to play it. And so I'll try to explain that to them. But I would say most places, there is not someone who can translate. However, 99% of these kids at some point in their week have access to internet and Google Translate, whether it's on the phone or uh, an internet cafe type computer, I would say that if there's something they need to translate, they're gonna find a way to translate it. So don't let that necessarily prevent you from sending certain things, but just know that they're not gonna be able to read a novel in most cases. But if they needed to translate something or if they had a letter that they wanted to translate, they can definitely find either a teacher at their school that teaches English or find someone around them or find access to Google Translate and be able to translate short letters or short things. So um, the short answer is no. However, they will find access if they desire to have something translated. Stacy Berry asks, I wondered about candles. It's been on my mind, but rarely hear anybody talking about sending them. Um, that's interesting. And I looked on Operation Christmas Child, and it does not, at least from what I saw, it does not forbid the sending of candles. So candles, as far as I know, double check the website, make sure that in your area, you're allowed to send them. But as far as I know, you are allowed to send candles. My guess is that most people don't send them because you can't send any fire starters. You can't send um, a lighter, you can't send matches. And so my guess is that most people choose not to send them because they can't also send what they need to light them. However, matches here are super common. We use them. We have gas stoves for the most part. So we use them to light stoves. Um, so if you wanted to send candles in Ecuador as well, we in the jungle area, we had matches readily available because we had gas, um, gas tanks to our stoves. So it actually connected via gas tank and you would um, light it. You didn't have a pilot light. And so if you guys sent candles, those would definitely be a blessing. I will say that my husband and I use candles when the power goes out. Um, so candles would be another great option, um, just as something extra to send as long as Operation Christmas Child in your area accepts them. So that would be the only thing to look into. Judy Frazier asked a few questions. She asked about the menstrual pads, but I did answer that one. So we'll jump over that. She also asked, do most of the girls have pierced ears? 
Yes. Um, at least in the two Latin American countries where I have been, most girls do. And they actually keep asking us if we're going to pierce Eliana's ears. It is very common um, to pierce baby's ears so that they can tell boys and girls apart. Um, and so pierced ears are, I would say, probably 80% or more of the girls have pierced ears. Um, are fishing kits good to pack for boys 10 to 14? So this one's kind of a hit or miss, and this is where I'm going to give my opinion. The challenge is you don't know where those packs are going to go, where those boxes are going to go. So if they were received in the jungle areas, I think it would be super, super beneficial because there are fresh rivers close by. If they're received here in Bogota, all of the rivers are polluted and there's no fish and there's no fishing. And so it's kind of a hit or miss. I would say pray about it. And if God puts it on your heart for a particular box, go for it. Um, even if one came to Bogota, where we're at in the city, I'm sure the kids would find some other use for it. So it's not that it would go to waste. It just may or may not get used as a fishing kit, depending on what area of the country or what country it goes to. Um, are sewing kits good to pack for girls 10 to 14? Again, I would say absolutely. This one is great. It has a skill. Even if the little girls don't know how to sew, it's going to be useful for their family. Um, we've had a lot of clothes donated from our Eliana and many of them have little holes in them and I sew them up just by hand. And so as I'm thinking through my life, that would be something that's useful to the family, um, useful for her to learn if she has the ability. So I would say absolutely. Sewing kits are a fantastic idea. And Judy's final question is, do the two to four-year-olds come back for the discipleship lessons? Um, yes, they do. They typically come again with their parents and they tend to be a little bit less consistent than the older kids, um, but they do come back. And I will say those discipleship packets, um, booklets that Samaritan's First gives us are a little bit too advanced in terms of reading and writing for the two to four-year-olds. And we tend to not be given enough discipleship books for the boxes that we receive. So for instance, we received 200 boxes and I haven't counted them yet, but I know we didn't receive 200 discipleship packets. So what we typically do since a, we don't have enough and B they're not right for that age group is what we do is we prepare a lesson for the kids that are two to four. And so they still hear the same Bible story. We still ask them verbally. A lot of the questions that are in that discipleship booklet but then they have a different activity that's more geared for a two to four year old instead of the older kids. And so, yes, they come back. We just have to, as pastors and missionaries, adapt a little bit to make it more applicable for those two to four year old kids. Okay. OCC Land asks, do the children ever receive more than one shoebox in their lifetime? And the answer is yes. There is no perfect way to make sure that a kid doesn't, especially if two ministries at some point in that child's lifetime come to their neighborhood to do uh, an Operation Christmas Child campaign, then yes, they would get two boxes. Um, we actually, in our training, in the teacher training, and I'll put a link to that one up here if you guys are interested in seeing how we got trained as OCC teachers. But in that teacher training, they actually told us a story of a pastor who gave out boxes eight years in a row to the kids in his church and therefore the kids received eight boxes. So that is not the heart of Operation Christmas Child. My husband and I try to be very diligent. Um, we know the kids that are in our ministry. So now we have a record, um, a list of those kids that got them this year. And if we choose to do Operation Christmas Child next year, then we'll go to a different area of the neighborhood that we didn't invite this year and try to make sure that to the best of our ability, we're not repeating kids so that every child gets an opportunity to hear the gospel, gets an opportunity to participate in that project, but we're not doing it over and over and over again for the same kids. Um, so yes, do kids receive them more than once? It happens. Um, we just try to be very diligent to prevent that for our kids and for our ministry. Dee Rogers made a really good comment. Um, I had mentioned in my last video that I didn't necessarily recommend packing shoes. Again, if that's on your heart, go for it. But my recommendation was no, because at least the two areas that I've been shoes were accessible and the shoes that came always tended to be too small, but I loved the comment that Dee Rogers gave. And so I'm going to read her comment to you guys. I do think that if someone is led to pack shoes, then by all means go for it. 
I try to keep on the higher size range. In many countries that my boxes go to, shoes are like diamonds, particularly a flip-flop can be easily packed. So again, I just want to reiterate, it was my personal opinion not to pack shoes, but if an item is allowed by OCC and you feel led to send it, go for it. And like she said, there might be certain countries where the kids don't even care if they don't fit them perfectly because they need those shoes. So don't let what I mentioned of my opinions stop you. If you guys feel led to give the shoes, give the shoes. But just like D. Rogers mentioned, try to keep in that higher size range of the shoes. So if you're sending a five to nine box, send shoes that would fit a nine-year-old uh, just because it's better for them to be too big to, than too small but love her thoughts. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Like I said, I am answering questions, but I'm also sharing some really good thoughts that some of you guys had that I think are valuable to other packers as well. Melody Mills um, asked a question on Robin's channel and also made a comment. So I'm going to respond to both of those. So her question was, I was told a good item to put in were plastic shower curtains. What is your opinion on that item? Yay or nay? Again, I have never seen a plastic shower curtain come in. However, as I'm just thinking about it, it would have multiple uses. They could use it as a shower curtain. They could use it to cover their bicycle, um, to keep it dry. They could use it to patch up a leaking roof. I mean, it has a lot of uses. So if it's not taking up a whole lot of space and you wanna send it, go for it. It's not one of those, I think, top items that I would say have to go in every box, but I don't think there's any problem with sending it. I think it's a really cool idea that could definitely be multi-purpose. And then she also made a comment. So she said, oh my goodness, I can't even imagine having to turn away a child. So prayers is a necessity for sure. So I mentioned one of the hardest things for us as pastors and missionaries is knowing how many kids to invite, knowing how many boxes to ask for. And so you do run that risk every time of having too many kids that you don't have boxes for. I mentioned that Yes, it's possible that we would swap a size um, and give either younger size or older size if we ran out of a particular size. Um, we've never specifically asked OCC if that was okay, but we have had to do it because we had one extra kid or two extra kids in a certain size group and had extra boxes in another size. But what she's mentioning is what if more kids come and you just don't have the boxes? So thankfully my husband and I have never had that happen. Um, we tend to have extras and then we can do kind of a more specific invite and just invite exactly the number of kids that we have. But I will say that one of our ministry friends did run into this problem this year. So they have just started a brand new, um, outreach in a neighborhood close to their church. And they started it three or four weeks before operation Christmas child. And so they invited a bunch of kids and the kids that were coming to their outreach were about 70 kids. And so they figured, okay, we're going to ask for a hundred boxes and we should be good. Well, the day of their outreach event, they asked for the hundred boxes. They had their hundred boxes and 138 kids came. And so you can imagine they're sitting there, they have a hundred boxes and 138 kids. And so my husband and I asked them what they did. And they said that unfortunately, in some cases, they had to give one box to two kids. So if they had siblings that were roughly the same age, they gave them a box to share. Um, and then they also said that they contacted OCC and asked, they said, we have 38 kids. We've taken their names. We've taken their phone numbers and their addresses. Can we have more boxes to give out to those 38 kids that came, heard the gospel, but we didn't have boxes to share. Unfortunately, their coordinator did not get back to them. And so what they ended up doing is they recollected some of the cardboard boxes empty from some of the kiddos. And what they did is they filled them themselves. So the teachers and the pastor and the church donated, they went out and they found washcloths and crayons, and they used some of the church budget to build a box. They said they were not even close to what the boxes were that came. They were probably half full boxes. They had one toy, a few school supplies, and a few hygiene things for each kid. But they ended up refilling those boxes and giving them to those 38 extra kids. And so that was the solution that they found to make up for the fact that they didn't have enough boxes. So again, I share you this story just to let you know, it does happen and it's a challenge um, I'm thankful that we've never had to face that challenge and had that happen, but 
those are two of the solutions that this particular church found to solve the problem of having more kids than they had boxes. So first they gave boxes to siblings um, to share, and then they also ended up creating some of their own boxes out of their own pockets. Um, so that was just a story to share, to answer, and just to kind of say it does happen. So these next three are actually comments, not questions. And they're just things that I really wanted to share with you that I appreciated um, that people put in the comment section. So they're all on the same topic of the baby dolls. This was one of the biggest discussions in the comment section on the last video. I shared my opinion on um, trying to get kind of diverse dolls to send in the boxes, but I loved the comments that these ladies had to share. And so I wanted to share them with you. So Birdfeed said, regarding the coloring of dolls, I agree but I don't worry about it as much as I used to since watching a YouTuber, Rena, of one child at a time who is not associated with OCC, but has her own outreach going on for impoverished children in Mexico, Peru, Philippines, and South America. She's sort of a one woman show. She has made mention several times that the children of color she distributes toys and clothing to love getting Caucasian baby dolls. I guess it's sort of like the kids who don't speak English love getting t-shirts with English words on them. Just thought I'd throw that out there as even more food for thought and confusion. Birdfeed, thank you so much for sharing because I think it's a great point. Kids are going to love it and it doesn't, at the end of the day, I don't think it's a huge issue, but I love that thought. Fiona Edwards also made a comment on this topic. She said, if the doll that she sends is blonde and blue eyed, then I will pack another item that may appeal to a girl just like me, brown hair and hazel eyes. I love that idea of just making in one box diversity. I love that. And GTBMEL also had a great thought on this topic. She said, where I live, my boxes go to Dallas. So I reasoned that Latin America is closest and the most likely destination. And I decided to get a bunch of Elena and Avalor Barbies so they would look like the girl receiving the box. That year, God decided to send all my boxes to Gabon, Africa. I now think maybe it is a sign that the skin color shouldn't really matter. I hope the girls receiving the boxes will love their dolls regardless of skin color. I have also thought about maybe sending more than one doll in a box with both being a different skin color. That's kind of the same thing that Fiona mentioned sort of making the statement that people of different races can be friends. So I really appreciated those three comments. I just wanted to share them with you guys. Again, I don't think, like they said, I think rethinking it, I don't think it really matters. Um, so just pray about it and do what God leads you to do. But I loved those thoughts and I just wanted to share them with you as well. All right, Foothills family also mentioned something that I thought I would share that I had never thought of. This is a comment that Foothills family made. She said that they received a package yesterday with packs of chalk in it. Everything was covered in chalk dust. I thought about our shoebox kiddos and decided I would put those in a baggie too inside the container, LOL. So just from her own experience, she is now going to start packing chalk in baggies. And I think that's a great idea. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Okay, I had to move Eliana's seat closer because she keeps crawling up in it and that was terrifying me. All right, next question. Um, Beth Rigdon, pierced ears, question mark. Yes or not a good idea. Um, so like I said before, absolutely go for it. Send earrings. If they don't happen to have pierced earrings, it's a great gift to re-give to someone else. And what plastic boxes besides OCC are good and sturdy? Um, Matt Man and Robin actually made a response to this one. And since I don't know what boxes and things are available, I'm going to read their response. So they said yes to pierced earrings. I think it's pretty common around the world. I trust that Samaritan's Purse would restrict the item if it was inappropriate. Great comment. Um, there are restrictions based on where the boxes are sent from and where they're going. So again, check your, your listing because I know some areas aren't necessarily open to jewelry for girls. Um, so just check your, your OCC listing. And then her answer to the plastic boxes, she said, my favorite plastic box is from Daiso, but they are hard to find. My second choice would be high quality box from Target or Walmart, like Sterilite. All right, the next question is from Maritza Koping. 
And she said, I would like to know if the older boys enjoy receiving action heroes or figures like Marvel. Yes, absolutely. Um, even the 10 to 14 year olds, because it's something cool. They love the movies. They've seen the movies. And so, yes, I would say action figures are a great find, even for the older age group. I know they make some that are kind of like more comical. Those might be a little bit younger, um, geared towards the younger kids, but I would say even the older boys enjoy them. All right, this is the last question. And this is my question regarding other countries. So this is the one, if you guys wanted to hear the opinions from Africa, this is the last question. It's from Denise. And she says, I'm still thinking about graph paper since these videos for one. I noticed today that Walmart has composition books with graph paper, and I'm trying to decide whether to switch to packing those instead of lined papers. The thing is, many of my boxes go to African countries. I haven't heard what kind of paper kids there tend to need for school. Maybe I need to do a bit of research. Well, I reached out to some of my missionary friends and did a little bit of research for you as well. Um, these three are all missionaries in Africa. Um, again, I'm not going to share their names or locations because it's not necessarily public knowledge. Um, some of their areas are not open to the Christian faith or to missions. But with that being said, here's our conversation. So I asked all three of them. This was the question that I asked. I said, a few people have been asking me for suggestions on what to send in Operation Christmas Child shoeboxes. I have given them my perspective from serving here in Latin America. For instance, here, kids use a lot of graph paper in school. They recently asked me about school supplies for African countries, since many of the boxes they send go there. Do you have any suggestions that I can share with them? Do kids near you use lined or graph paper in schools? If you have a moment to share your thoughts, I would love to pass them on to them. So missionary number one responded and she said, thanks for asking. That's a good question. For school supplies, they would use thin notebooks that can have any kind of lines on them. Usually theirs is graph, but that is definitely the cheapest for them. They use pencils and pens and erasers with a pencil. Our neighbor's kids use a little chalkboard and chalk all the time to practice on. Toothbrushes, toothpaste is always good. For toys, they enjoy any small cars or little plastic animals. Do they separate boxes by age? I've never been involved with this project. The younger kids love stuffed animals. Any size ball from tiny bouncy balls to hacky sack to small soccer balls are always a hit. Chinese jump ropes are a favorite along with regular jump ropes. Hope that helps. So again, remember OCC does not allow you to send toothpaste, but I wanted to read exactly her response. Do they separate boxes by age? Yes, and I did let her know two to four, five to nine and 10 to 14. And so I just love those ideas. So they appear to use graph paper and it's mostly in her area because it's the cheapest for the kids. Um, she recommends any types of balls, bouncy balls, hacky sacks, um, stuffed animals are great, little cars, plastic animals. So those are kind of some good suggestions in general from her opinion, from her perspective. And then Chinese jump ropes. If you don't know what that is, it's like a continuous circle of almost a stretchy band. It's not as resistant as a bungee cord. It's a lot thinner, but they're kind of little stretchy. So interesting to see. Um, love that perspective. Here's the response from missionary two. Again, I asked them the exact same question. I just copied and pasted it. So this one says, Hey, that's great that they are thinking about what to send them. So they use graph paper usually in what looks like a composition book. They use pens for the most part and folders can also be helpful. Books are nice, but you never know which country your box will go to. And if they speak English or French or Portuguese, so it's better to not do books in my opinion and something that they can use. Practical things for hygiene is nice, but some countries may or may not use it like we do. Toothbrush and toothpaste is not universal, but they will likely know what it is and like having one. Again, toothpaste isn't allowed, but I'm just reading through her answer. The rest of her response says, also, I had some friends who received a box that was over a year old. So make sure that they don't send things that will go bad. Also, toys are fun, but nothing with batteries, because if they can't afford to get more batteries, then it just won't work again. Chalk is a good gift, and stickers are fun for them, and they do like coloring. So those are the opinions from the second missionary. Okay, and last but not least, the third missionary responded in this way. 
Hey, Kayla, good to hear from you. Ha ha, you're asking the wrong person. I'm not a shoebox fan. Most of that stuff could be bought here and support the local economy. But anyways, I know Americans love them and it makes them feel like they are doing something for the needy. I do think kids are asked to get graph paper for math class, even though it isn't used properly. They still just do simple math equations with it, no graphs. School supplies are good gifts, but only 50 to 60% of the kids go to school. So a large portion of the kids receiving boxes wouldn't use the gifts, but they would surely be snatched up by an older sibling or neighbor who could use them. Erasers are generally poor quality here and just smudge the paper. So a good quality eraser would be useful. Maybe a little calculator? I know a lot of tracts, but what we really need are English Bibles. Even if a child can't read it, someone who can will pick it up. That might be the best use for those boxes. Few can read them, but the ones that can read English can't buy a decent translation locally. So I wanted to share that opinion. Um, it's always good to see, I think, all sides of Operation Christmas Child, and I appreciate her perspective. Um, I did talk to her a little bit more, and I understand the economy piece. I think because the kids only receive it once, it's not going to have a huge long-term impact on the economy because those five pencils that they receive in that box aren't going to last them forever. They're still going to have to buy from the local economy, but I do understand that perspective and I wanted to share it with you because I think it's valuable, but it does look like that in all three of those African locations, they tend to use graph paper too. So I did find that interesting and wanted to share it with you guys. If you guys have other questions, please, please, please put them in the comments below. I am more than happy to share other ideas. If you did not see that first video with Q&A that I did, I'm gonna put a link over here so that you guys can check it out. And then make sure you subscribe so that you guys don't miss any of our OCC videos or the other videos of our life as missionaries. And we will see you on the next video.